Curry had a question about the Chelsea midfield. We've spoken about Conor Gallagher and then Enzo Fernandez, who went on to play really well in that second half. We also had a question, and it ties in with something you said earlier, Stevie, about a lot of possession for Chelsea, but ultimately no end product. And look, Nkunku is going to be a huge miss. He's going to be out yeah. for, for a few months, especially in pre-season, because the two of them really looked like they were linking up. But there is a suggestion, could Chelsea do with, with a Lukaku type? Is, is the door totally closed for him or could that work with Nico Jackson playing off Lukaku? No. No, I don't know. Uh, no, no, Lukaku's not changing this team, I don't think. Um, and that's and that really, that's really the tough part, I think, of Pochettino's job is how is he going to get goals from this team? Uh, because Raheem Sterling today was the Raheem Sterling of last season. Um, very ineffective. Even when he had it, didn't look as though he had any real idea how to get past his opponent. Um, and, and I thought it was, was, was really poor. Kubrick came on at the end. Again, shows loads of pace, but doesn't look as though he quite has the experience yet as far as creating stuff and, and, and playing off Jackson or anybody else. And, and, and Jackson, as good as he is when you see him opening those legs and running in behind and and try to run away from defenders is he's he's far from the finished article. So look, Chelsea need a proper centre forward, a guy a guy with brains, a guy who can who can lay it off and then run in behind, a guy who can link up. And obviously, if you can get a guy with pace uh, and some goal scoring boots, then that tops it off. Because I think we saw that chance you were talking about with Jackson had in the first yeah. half, a real goal scorer. That's in the back of the net. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got, a, he's got a clean hit at it. Nobody's getting close enough to him. Yes, Kanati's there, but it, it's a dream opportunity. It should be in the back of the net. And, and it wasn't a great attempt. So, listen, Jackson, as I said, as exciting as he is when he opens his legs and runs in behind, I'm not so sure he's a finisher. Yeah, like I commentated on him a lot in La Liga last season when he eventually broke into the Villarreal side. And a lot of the time he came in, he used his pace and he came in from a wide area or he was waiting in a wide area to receive the ball. And again, it's something that's slightly different. He has played through the middle before. But now we're going to tie this up nice and neatly. He was involved in a big shout for a Liverpool penalty. You've already spoken about this. Now, one of my favorite written articles every week on ESPNFC.com is Dale Johnson's VAR review. And I'm looking forward to what's said about this. So ultimately, I think that in the review by Dale on Monday morning will be seen as the correct decision. However, and I'm, let me explain this first, if you wouldn't Please mind. Do. I totally get what you've said. No one seems to know these days what is and what isn't. The reason I think they'll give to justify no penalty, because at first when you see the replay, you think, that's a penalty. I think they're going to say that if it doesn't hit his arm, which is about here, it's going to hit his shoulder. It's going to hit another part of his body, and it's not going to go all the way through. I think that's what they're going to... I'm just trying to justify it, whether or not I think it was or it wasn't. No, you're justifying it, but, but you're not making it right. No, well, I, that's what I'm trying to say, what I think they will do. His, arm, his arm's not here. His arm's not here. He's Where do you there. think it is? It's there. That's what it, I think they've outside, got to decide. It's outside the width of his shoulder. And, well, and to justify not giving the penalty, they will say exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. That had it not hit his hand, it would have hit his shoulder. Which, which, listen, I will look at it again for the thousandth time, but yeah. I've seen it three, three or four times already. And, and his hand only go, goes inside after he's hit the ball. Because right. when the ball hits his hand, his, his hand's outside. And then all of a sudden it comes inside. So I, I don't see if, if if what happened is what you're you're saying has happened. If the arm is, and I know we're out, outside of the screen here, but if it's beyond the body, if it's there and it's not going to strike the body, I don't see. There we go. See full screen. If the arm's out here and it hits the arm and it's not going to hit the body, I don't see how you cannot give a penalty right. for that. But I think they'll say, if my hand is in front of my body and if my hand isn't here, it's going to strike my shoulder. No, right, I think no. that is what they're going to say. That is the reason why it wasn't given. The bottom well, line is... Reckon, let's be honest. If that's what happened, then that would be correct. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Now, there you go. Look from there. Wait, are you telling me that his, his palm of his hand is open in his oh, shoulder? You can't, you can't, you can't see the palm of the hand from, from that still. But I think what they'll say, based on that piece of evidence there, 
is that the arm is tucked in. Now, this is when, I mean, the whole natural, unnatural position, making yourself bigger. Until you see one that's that's directly on. I think right. if it's if it's outside your body, I don't see how you cannot give that as a penalty. But if it's tucked in, then I can see why it maybe hasn't I, been given. I can accept if it's if it's inside. Right. Okay. If it's inside the width of your shoulder, I can accept. I can accept that. Mm. But as I said, it wasn't. It, yeah. what, it, his, his hand was not inside his shoulder when the ball hit it. It might be one of these if it's given on the field of play. There you go. If it's yeah, given as right. a penalty. So, I mean, there you go. Right. Do you need any more proof? Come on. If it's given on the field as a penalty, I don't see how you overturn it. Have they got the right angle that shows that it wouldn't have hit another part of his body or it would have hit? I don't know. So it wasn't given. They clearly haven't seen enough to overturn that. But it is contentious. But going back to what you said at the first point, we need some clarification. What is, what isn't, what's a natural position, what's protecting yourself, well, why are your far. arms up in the first yeah, place? Yeah, 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 it's gone far too, it's too far, of course too far has. gone. Of it's too far gone. No penalty you know, was awarded. It's too far gone. We've, we've reached a stage now where we've had half a dozen, over the last two or three years, we've had half a dozen rethinks, re-rules, re-this, re-that, Officially, nobody really does, and it, it kind of falls down to the day. On the day, depending on who's on the VAR and who the referee is, it depends on the day whether a situation like that is or is not given. Well, it, it's gone too far now. A quarter of an hour to go, around about a quarter of an hour of normal time to go, and Mohamed Salah's number goes up and he's replaced. What do you make of his reaction? I think it's only natural. You know, when you're, you know, the argument for not taking Salah off is that Salah, regardless of how good or how bad he may be playing, can just do something from nothing. But that's that's the only argument for keeping him on. Because if he looks himself in the mirror, he can't turn around and, and say that he, he had a good game. You know, he did play a fantastic pass for the Diaz goal. Um but he was offside, only marginally for the goal. He had two other opportunities where he had plenty of time to set himself up. And quite frankly, the the two attempts were pretty rotten. And if he had, if he had the ball ten times, out of those ten times, he probably lost it or gave it away eight times. So as a player, if you're going to go and chat the manager's door and have a problem with getting substituted, it's very, it's very hard to have an argument when, when that's what you've produced. So, as I said, the, the only reason for keeping Salah on is the fact that he is capable of creating something from nothing. I think we saw in pre-season, Stevie, with Mohamed Salah, loads of assists. He's got a few goals as well, but he seems to at times be playing slightly wider and then other times he seems to be tucked in. A little bit more. An angry Salah ultimately could be bad news for Bournemouth mm. next week, couldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, again, part of it is is probably a kick up the backside as well. Um, nobody's immune to to having a talking to. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.